Hello, everyone. It's Dr. Nair Pandya. A lot of Golden State Warriors fans have questions about Stephen Curry's shoulder injury. Here's a quick breakdown of this type of shoulder injury, what we look for in terms of diagnoses, what the work would be, and what the potential return to play timelines are. Now, the first important thing to understand is the mechanism of injury. When Stephen Curry's arm was extended out and then he impacted another player, that places the shoulder in a very vulnerable position as a lot of force can go across the shoulder. Now, the various possibilities when an athlete has this kind of injury include, number one, possibly a muscle strain where there can be some degree of tearing, whether it be partial, full, or microscopic of the muscle, particularly the rotator cuff or the deltoid. Number two, this could be a shoulder subluxation where the shoulder partially comes out of joint but then comes back in itself. Number three, it could be a shoulder dislocation where the shoulder fully comes out or pops back in. That seems less likely based on what we saw on the court. Or number four, it could be a stinger where the nerves are stretched around the shoulder, which basically give you numbness and weakness in the arm itself. Now, typically when an athlete suffers this injury, you get an x-ray to rule out any fractures, and it would appear that the Warriors would probably say that if that was the case, there were any fractures. Number two, then an athlete gets an MRI. And the reason why the MRI is important is that it shows the bone in more detail, shows the ligaments, looks at the cartilage, which is the labrum inside the shoulder. It also looks at the muscles as well too, particularly the rotator cuff muscles, the deltoid and the biceps. It also looks for bone bruising. Based on the MRI, most of the time with the shoulder, you can basically tell what the diagnosis is. You're gonna see if there's any degree of injury to the muscle. You're gonna see the degree of injury to the cartilage, which is the labrum. You're also going to see any bruising in the bone, and you're also going to get a better sense of the overall picture, particularly the muscles, the cartilage, and ligaments all together. Now, if you think of a muscle strain based on the degree of muscle injury, it's typically a one to two week recovery period. If it's very minor, it could be day to day. There's a shoulder subluxation, which is basically the shoulder partially coming out of joint. The NBA data suggests that this could be a three to four week injury. If it's a shoulder dislocation, that can be about seven to eight weeks based on some of the data that's been published. The good news is for the most part, barring any major injury or a great degree of instability, which means there's a lot of degree of damage to the labrum and the cartilage in the shoulder, most NBA players who suffer this type of shoulder injury aren't suffering something that is season ending. Now, obviously the MRI will tell us a little bit more about the diagnosis and when he can return to play. The good news for Stephen Curry is this seems to be the first time he's had a major shoulder injury. Most NBA players don't require surgery or season ending type treatment for this kind of injury. And it's also his non-dominant hand, meaning it's not something that he uses to generate power when he's shooting and dribbling. Hopefully we'll get good news with the MRI tomorrow and that'll help us give us a little bit more clarity as to the diagnosis. Thank you.